Welcome to Skills in Automation. My name is Ash and this is part 3 of a tutorial series on how to send emails using Excel VBA. Our focus here is sending multiple attachments per email. We will look at two examples of how to do this. In this session, we will first look at a demo to visualize what we will be building. Next, we will look at a simple example where we create just one email with multiple attachments. Last. We will look at a more complex example where we send multiple emails with multiple attachments each. We will use advanced filters through VBA in this example which should be interesting. Before we begin, I would like to mention that there will be more tutorials coming out on sending emails where we deep dive into some other concepts such as manipulating HTML text inside the email body. In addition, we have YouTube videos for projects based on real life scenarios such as creating a daily schedule to automatically refresh and send out an Excel report via Outlook. Lastly, we also have brief how to videos that will cover popular Outlook code snippets that you can access easily. Please do check those out as well. All the code covered in this tutorial will be available on our website skillsandautomation.com. I'll post the links in the description below. Okay, let's move on to the demo. There are two parts to this demo. First, we will look at sending multiple attachments in a single email. Here, we have five overdue invoices belonging to one customer, Mighty Big Mart. We will send that customer one email with all these five invoices attached. Let's open our VB editor, Alt F11. Here's our code, let's run it. Great, we can see one email created with five invoices. Moving on to our next example, this example is slightly more complex. Here, we will send multiple attachments in multiple emails. Here, we have 15 invoices belonging to a mix of three customers. Instead of sending one email per invoice, we will send one email per customer and attach all the invoices that belong to that customer. This is more efficient. We will also total the gross amounts and supply the total in the body of the email as the total amount overdue for that customer. And one more thing, we just have customer or company names out here. No email IDs. We will source the email ID from the email addresses worksheet in a VLOOKUP style function. Okay, let's run the macro related to it. Great. We can see three emails, each with the right amount of attachments. We can also see the total in the body of the email. And we have a message saying that all emails were sent successfully. Okay. Let's move on to building this code. In this example, we will attach all these invoices in column A to a single email. We will send the email through a separate sub. So the first question that comes to mind is how will we pass so many invoice files as arguments into the send email sub procedure? The answer here is through arrays. We will loop over the range of invoices and add them to a string as we move on to the next invoice in the loop. At the end, we will have a giant string of invoices separated by a comma. Then we will populate an array using the split function on the string, which will perform the split on the comma delimiter. Let's see this in action. First, let's create our function to send the email. The function will just take attachments as parameters, but there can be many attachments to attach. For that reason, we will pass all the attachments through a single array. So declaring our array here as a string and the function will be set to return a boolean. We will put in our error handler which we'll get to in a bit. First, let's create a reference to the Outlook library. Go to Tools, References, search for Microsoft, then search for Microsoft Outlook. This one right here. Click OK. Now. Let's connect to the Outlook application. And create the email object. I'm breezing through all of this since we have covered this many times now in past tutorials. Dim an iteration variable to loop over the array. Let's start filling the email details.
this will be the email address of the customer that we are going to send the five invoices to. We will not pass the subject and the body as parameters through the function. Instead, we'll declare these as constants at the top and we'll do that in a bit. Next, we'll need to attach each attachment that is stored as an element within the array. So we will loop from the first to the last element in the array and attach the current element. So we will move from the first to the last element. And we'll attach the current element as we move through the loop. Let's display this email. And we'll put in the send method, but we'll just comment it out. If you have reached the end of the with statement, then the email procedure ran successfully and the function can return a true. And we'll exit the function. But if this error handler gets triggered, we will return a false. Now let's put in some constants, one for the folder path, one for the email body and one for the subject. And now let's create the main sub. First, let's dim a few variables. I will explain what they are when we get to them. To loop over this range, we need to find the last row. And now let's build the loop. We will move from the second row to the last row variable. First, we'll grab the invoice number from column A. But this is just the invoice number. We need to add our folder path and the file extension, which is PDF at the start and the end. So let's do that. So adding the folder path, joining it to the invoice number and adding in an extension. So just for your reference, this is how all the invoices are saved on my folder drive. And this is the file path that we're using, which is the same as this. Now we will use this em attach variable as a giant string variable. We will concatenate each file name that we grab from each row and we'll separate out the file names by a comma. But now we will have one extra comma at the very end. So let's remove that. And finally, let's populate our array using the split function where the delimiter or the separator is the comma. So the split function will separate out all the file names in the em attach variable and it will separate out each value based on the comma. Now we are ready to send our emails using the send email function. So let's call that function. And that's it. Let's run this and see if it works. So we will run this from the main sub procedure. Great. Everything works okay. Our five invoices have been attached and all the email details have been populated. Okay. Let's move on to a more complex example. Here, we will be referencing this worksheet now, which has a mix of invoices, which belong to a mix of customers. Instead of sending one email per row, we are going to find which invoices belong to which customer. And we will send one single email just to that customer with all the respective invoices attached. And we will also total the gross amounts and mention that total in the body of the email. So let's get to it. Let's first declare a few constants one for the folder path and one for the subject. For advanced filters, you would normally use a separate tab to extract the results. And this will be a worksheet called work, which is this one right here. We also intend to output any errors onto the error worksheet. So first let's create a sub to clear out the contents on both these worksheets. So clear out all the cells in the error tab and clear out all the cells in the work tab. 
we will name the top cell in the error worksheet as status. On our sheet name work, we will treat cells E1 and E2 as the criteria range to filter data on the customer column. So let's name E1 as customer, but I would rather refer it directly to the right column header in the data. We could have just said customer out here, but I'm referring it directly to the cell C1, which is customer, but doing this just makes it a bit more dynamic. And we'll output the invoice number and amounts in column H and column I. So the first cells should be invoice number and gross amount, which is invoice number and gross amount. And that's it. We will call this later through our main sub. Let's create one more sub or rather function that grabs the email ID from the email addresses worksheet based on the customer. So this function will take the customer name or ID as the parameter. We are basically going to do a VLOOKUP style operation here. So let's declare a few variables. Let's find the last row of email addresses to loop over. So we want to find the last row out here. We're going to use a simple for loop to grab the value. This can be done more efficiently in many ways, but we will just stick to the simple for loop for now. The custom ID that we want to compare versus is in column A. So here, if the customer ID that we are querying matches the target customer ID, then we can go ahead and grab the email ID in column B and exit the loop. So if the customer ID from the function matches the target customer ID in column A, then we can grab the corresponding email address from column B. And we'll exit the for loop because there's no point continuing over the loop once we have gotten our result. And we can get the function to return the email ID. Next, let's create a function to send the email. It's the same function as in the previous segment, except that we will also pass the email recipient as a parameter. Everything else remains the exact same as what we did in the previous segment, except that instead of hard coding the email ID, we're going to take the email ID from the function parameter. Okay, now let's create our main sub. Turn off screen updating and turn it back on at the end. Let's call our cleanup worksheet sub. Next, we will declare a range variable to hold just the range of customers. And we'll also declare another range variable to hold the entire range of data and one final variable to hold the last row of data. Now let's find the last row. Let's set both the ranges now. First, the entire range of data, which runs from column A to F. And then just the customer data, which is in column C. We will grab the unique customers from this range. And now to find the unique customers in the data set, we will use advanced filters method on the customer range and output it onto our sheet name work into range A1. Advanced filter is a method of the range object. So for a first option, we don't want to filter it in place. We want to copy the results onto a different worksheet. Where do we want to copy it to? Our work tab and into range A1. And the important bit for finding unique values, we need to set unique to true. So the advanced filter is going to look into column C and it's going to find only the unique customers and return it into worksheet and place the data starting in range one. Let's just run this code just to see if it works. Okay, a typo. Let's run this again. Come to our worksheet. Wow, that worked. So we have a list of three unique customers, which is correct. Moving on, let's name a few variables. I'll explain them when we use them. Let's find the last row of the unique customers and we can then use it to loop over those customers. So we want to find the last row out here and we'll create the loop. First, we'll grab the customer name from the current row in column A and we'll assign it as a criteria in range E for the advanced filter. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop from the first to the last customer 
And as we move through the loop, we're going to take the customer from here and we're going to place it in column E, specifically in range E2. And this will act as the criteria for our data range. And the intention is to grab the invoice numbers and the gross amounts that are only related to that particular customer and place it in column H and column I. So here we assign the customer to range E2. And now let's grab the invoices just for this particular customer ID using advanced filter. And now we'll run the advanced filter method on the entire data range. Yes, we are going to copy the results onto our destination. The criteria range will be E1 and E2. And we will copy the range to column H and I. And this time we're not really interested in unique values. So we'll set this to false. Okay, I'm going to put a breakpoint out here and let's run the code just till this part to see if this advanced filter is working and whether we're getting results in column H and I. Run from the main sub. Okay, come back here. Right, so we've gotten some results. Let's just go through what's happening once again. So here we have our full data. We are finding the unique customers and placing it in column A. Then we are looping over column A for each customer. As we loop over, we take the customer name and place it in column E, which then becomes our criteria range. We use that criteria range to do an advanced filter over the data range again. But this time we're going to grab the invoice numbers and the gross amounts that are only related to that particular customer. And we will place them in column H and column I. So our code up until now is pretty much working fine. Stop this. And let's continue with our code. Let's grab the last row for our data result. Next, let's grab the email ID using the get email ID function that we have written down here. It will take the customer ID that we're currently looping over as the argument. Next, we want the total of all the gross amounts to be displayed in the body of the email. The gross amounts are in column I and we can add them using the sum function of the application dot worksheet function object. And we'll feed in the range that we want to sum. And this is our last row, so we'll put that there. So we're basically summing this range, but we want this in currency format so we can wrap this inside a format function. Great. Now we can feed the total variable into the email body. The body text is pretty much standard. What we want to note here is that we break out of the text and feed in a variable in between out here. So it's going to say total owing now is space and then it'll break out and it will place the total value that we have calculated over here. And now we're coming to the heart of the video that is populating the array of attachments. What we're going to do is pretty much what we did in the previous segment. We are going to loop over this column H and we will feed each invoice into the string separated by a comma and at the end, we will populate an array from the string using the split function. Exactly what we did in the previous segment. Let's start the loop. First, we'll grab the invoice number. I'm going to speed through this because we've already done this once. Next, we will add our folder path and our PDF extension to it. We will feed it in into our email attached variable and the file names will be separated by a comma. We need to remove the last comma. And finally, let's populate an array using the split function where the delimiter or the separator is the comma. And now we're ready to send our emails using the send email function. If the function returns a false, we will mention it onto our error worksheet. So pass in our email recipient and our array of file attachments. So if this is false, then let's find the last unpopulated row in column A on the error worksheet. So basically we're going to like find the last unused row on the error worksheet and we'll place a message there saying that 
that there was a problem sending an email for our current customer. And once the email procedure is done, let's empty this EM attach variable so that it can be used by the next customer ID in the loop. And for the very end, let's check whether we have any errors. If the value in range A2 on the error worksheet is not blank, then there is at least one error and the user must be alerted. So here's a code which checks that. If the value in range A2 is not blank, then there is at least one error and that's what our message box will say. Otherwise, we will just send a message saying that all emails were sent successfully. Okay, let's run this code and see if everything works fine. Okay, we get an error. This variable is not defined. I think I missed out on one part. So this function, we had just basically copied it from the previous segment. But unlike the previous segment, we need to pass the body through the function as well. And we have not done that out here. So let's stop this and declare a variable to hold the body. Change this. And well, we should be passing the body as well because we have done all this effort of finding the total and creating a dynamic text which holds the total inside of it. So for all that effort, we need to take the email body and pass it through the send email procedure as well. Okay, let's run this again and see if everything works fine. We got a message saying that all emails were sent successfully. Okay, you can see one two and three emails being populated. Our totals are showing up inside the body of the email and it's in currency format as well. Okay, everything seems to have worked fine. That is awesome. Just a note here, this code can be a lot more efficient, especially by using dictionaries. And I'll try and post a separate code using dictionaries to my blog site and perhaps even make a separate video on the same scenario using dictionaries. So that was the video. Hope the use of advanced filters was interesting and has given you some ideas you can use in your project. If you want to see the code done through dictionaries instead, please let me know in the comments below. Before I leave, I want to mention once again that we will be posting more tutorials related to Outlook emails. There is also a great project that covers an end-to-end -end real life scenario of scheduling a daily report through VPA. So make sure to look out for those. And if you feel that this video has added some value, please do consider subscribing. Okay. Thanks and see you in the next one.